Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, I'd like to talk about soundbars and how you should be choosing your soundbar. If you ever consider getting better sound from your TV, projector, or gaming setup, you're probably thinking some sort of an audio system. You could go a couple of ways. You could go purchase professional audio setup with separate uh, amplifier and also speakers all around them. You can uh, also have a lot of cable space, then you should be, maybe, if you have the budget, going for professional solutions because they will give you the best. That's why they exist. And you could also think about the small PC solutions like a Logitech and small devices like soundbars and also a couple of satellites and you hide the cables and you could have some game, some sort of a gaming setup. But if you want to use it in a general base and connect your smartphone easily or any kind of a Bluetooth device like tablets and stuff. So you should be thinking with a less cable soundbar as a first option. So there are some advantages and disadvantages, but what to look for when buying a soundbar? This is a guide and tutorial. I want to keep it as fast and as a small video as possible. So this setup, as you see from Samsung, the model is a HW H450. This is an old model seven year old uh, and uh, it comes with a soundbar and the base unit as you can see uh, on my side this is a 300 watt rms but i'm not going to talk about the specs and showing you the item but what you should be looking for the first thing is the bluetooth versions of these devices soundbars are mostly for the bluetooth connection and the most uh, later bluetooth version will be better like if you buy a bluetooth 2.0 because it's cheap it could have delays and connection problems with your TV, with your uh, console, or with your professional projection or Android box. So the later the Android version, uh, sorry, the Bluetooth version is better you have uh, for the connection uh, and the delay problems. For example, the best way to go in 2023 is having a Bluetooth 4 or 5 and 5.1, whatever. So choose the best as much as you can. For the Bluetooth version. The second thing is the connections. Connections are quite important. In this uh, case, we have 3.5 millimeter default audio jack, which is mostly used for headphones and computer outputs. And also, at least a couple of years ago, it was the standard of the phones and the iPods and many of the uh, audio devices. But uh, 3.5 millimeter jack can give you some sort of a buzzing sound because it is an analog signal. I rather go for a digital signal as if I can have the option to go. Bluetooth is a digital signal. HDMI, as you can see, is a digital signal. And also optically connecting is a digital signal source. So if you go to an analog source, you could have some sort of a buzzing sound. Maybe it could be from your electricity or your adapter or if the cables are becoming very near. So it's up to you. You can go also upload something analog to this, uh, connect something analog. You can get away with it. As much connection you have, you have more options, but the prices most of the time goes up. The HDMI port in and out in this device, we have two HDMI ports. Uh, that's, uh, you might be asking, hey, if you're going to connect from uh, Bluetooth, why do we need HDMI? HDMI will be helpful for you. Like if you have a console like me, uh, I have Xbox, Xbox One X, which is a 4K uh, console. I can put my console from one end to the input and from the output, I can connect it to a TV or a projection. So that way I will be digitally sending my visual signal and the audio signal. So no delay, the best signal quality, but one issue, you need to have supporting HDMI port. Like this is a seven or eight year soundbar, so no 4K 60p or 4K uh, 240 hertz of extreme gaming specs here. So you need to go full HD in this uh, soundbar. If you're going to plan your connecting your uh, PlayStation 5 or Xbox One X or any kind of 4K device, go through this. Uh, you might be thinking about the HDMI version and support of that version. It is very important in the beginning of the uh, choosing soundbar. And the one other thing is optical input. If you ask me, optical is one of the best way to connect to a sound device, to a speaker, because it's digital and no loss. So optical cables are quite thin, easy to hide. 
they are not just go, go, uh, good for bending because they are optical glass inside, some sort of reflective surface inside. So you should be thinking about uh, keeping the system straight as possible from the canal, if you have a cable canal. And optic, I recommend the optical input because uh, optic will be the best option for your TV because most of the time people will consider, hey, I have my TV with a Bluetooth connection. Why do I need to um, connect it optically? If you have a cable option, go for the cable. So Bluetooth might be like cutting out problem, canceling the connection, connection lost. Somebody tries to connect to the Bluetooth automatically. It can happen. So if you have an optical source, go for the optical. It's better and stable, believe me. Mm -hmm. A lot happened in, the, in this journey of technology. So one other thing is the USB port, as you see here, this USB port gives 5 volts, 0 0.5 amps, which means it cannot run Android boxes or Android dongles. Many of the uh, projection, pro professional projections have 1.5 ampere ports these days. If you go 4K, my Optima UHD 35 has 1.5 amperes of 5 volts power output for Android dongles or smart devices to connect to the projectors. For the projectors or something on the ceiling, uh, connecting with the audio cable could be problematic. So you go, you can either go for the Bluetooth. You always have the options because every sound bar supports most of the time. Of course, I'm saying 90% and more is definitely built to connect with the Bluetooth. So one other thing, if you go for the speaker and the sound bar combo together, because this unit just so uh, they are selling this unit like this. So you can have something like this or bigger soundbar with no subwoofer at all. It's up to you. Most of the time, no soundbar, even if they, if they get bigger, if you don't spend $1,000, they won't give you the same bass level with these subwoofers. They can't give it to you because the casing, the Box size, everything increase the bass quality if you little bit of have experience with speakers. So you definitely need a separate subwoofer if you want the good bass level. But in this case, you might be thinking, hey, where is the cable that this connects these things together? There is no cable. You connect uh, Bluetooth or whatever connection you have at the back. In the soundbar and soundbar connects the uh, subwoofer just uh, from wireless setup so you don't have to connect anything you just have to plug it to the power and they can connect together some sort of delay can happen uh, according to their technology bus could be a delay but bass sound delayed is not an issue for most of the time because of the speeches are just lip movements are just synchronized from the center unit so it might not be an actual problem, but for a hardcore cinema lover or extreme gamer, it could be a little problematic. So choose the best setup, most expensive one if you have the budget. But if you go for low budget, there could be some delays. Uh, one other thing is the placement. I will tell you and then get back to the digital thing. And if you want to have the perfect base, uh, if, uh, if you have the space for it, just put the subwoofer. This is a base pack the base hole and the driver's driver is here either put it like this to a wall or the base unit to the wall like this if you go like this you can have the great base in most base out of it just keep the variation to a wall or a hard place one last thing is if you want to enjoy the base and if your seat is high like your couch is high i just installed a couple of velcros on this side of the unit, just to apply it like this. If I put it like this, it won't be scratched because of the Velcros and the setups like I created as legs and the base unit will hit the couch from the bottom. And also this uh, base reflex will be hitting the uh, wall and it will give me better base and also the room more likely be shaken like at least the couch for my setup. And it will affect the cinema experience, I believe, very much. So you should also thinking about this for gaming purposes rather than buying a 5.1 or 
2.1 subwoofer and small setup. You could go for a decent soundbar, maybe smaller size uh, for both the subwoofer and the unit. And for this setup, it's generally starting from $99, $150 range. Gen uh, these are generic devices. So if you go up onto the level, if they have the base inside the soundbar, the price is also going up, but also you have the better sound out of it. More drives, more output, more acoustic designs. One other thing is some of the models have more than one HDMI port, so they could be acting like a splitter or multiplier for HDMI ports. What that does is you can put your Xbox next to a Blu-ray player, next to a CD player for the music output if you have some sort of a, like a still a VCD player, kind of HDMI output VCD player with all technologies in it, you can use all of them connecting to soundbar and soundbar just gives one HDMI cable out to your TV or your projector. So you'll get less cable crowd positioning at the uh, TV unit, on, on the TV unit or inside the TV unit. One other thing is the advantage and look out for in the box content is the hangers. Like there are metal hangers. As you can see, we have hole, one hole here, one hole here. They are just manufacturing like L arms. They are standing like this. So it will be holding the soundbar like this, either on the TV unit, TV up, upside of the TV or below the TV, or you can just stick it on a wall like this. It will fly on the wall. Now you can place these stuff any, more than anything, like more than any speaker you can imagine. So this is the advantage advantage uh, of the soundbar, and th that's why I like them. But there are downsides, which I will come. One last thing is the D Dolby uh, Atmos or Dolby Digital DTS uh, or other technologies. Some of the soundbars have huge amount of technologies. They write on it and look out for them. Like if you uh, have the Dolby Atmos, Dolby True HD, uh, 7.1, 8.1 kind of 4K Blu-rays Blu and 4K Blu-ray players, then you might be thinking about uh, for those technologies because if those technologies are not supported for with the soundbar or any kind of receiver, you won't get the best out of your source. So your source is important and also your output is important, but it also increases the uh, price of the product. For me, I, I would definitely choose uh, Dolby Atmos or some sort of a surround setup coming from this. Yamaha and GBL products uh, have a lot of devices like them and also LG and Samsung creating a lot of soundbar setups because of their TVs. They are selling with the TVs or making combinations. So when you have more uh, surround technologies, uh, Drives automatically calculates the room and also reflects the sound from one wall to the other, the backside, and then it comes right to your uh, ear. It goes like this. It hits the wall and hits the back wall and comes to my ear. And it creates a back speaker experience like 5.1, 7.1, 8.1, whatever it is. So more technology you have, the sound bar can create a really back speaker effect. One other thing is some uh, manufacturers, I believe Samsung and LG has those sort of devices and definitely GBL and Yamaha probably has them because they they are like more higher levels like Harman Kardon, GBL and Yamaha. They are only audio manufacturers. They are not making TVs. So these are like most of the time people think about Samsung, Sony and also GB, and, sorry, the LG. Those devices are also TV manufacturers. So if you have some sort of those technologies, you get what you pay for, but uh, surround setup, but some production companies create separate wireless units. Like you put it on a subwoofer, just like a subwoofer connected to a power source and two separate satellite speakers will connect it wirelessly to your front elements. And it becomes like one soundbar one subwoofer, two back elements, and you got like two, one, three, and four. Four speaker of a surround sound. You could also apply some extra speakers if you can. There are systems out there like Sonos. I'm not talking about fully smart devices which connect each other, and there are many brands out there. If you go about $1,000, you can really create any kind of setup. There are 
very different uh, sound bars or, uh, or audio setups out there. But in the end of the video, I'd like to tell you that if you choose whatever you choose about the sound bar, you'll be happy if you have enough power output for your room setup. Just measure your room, measure your also TV unit size because these things differentiate from 90 centimeters to uh, 70 centimeters to 120 centimeters bigger models for bigger TVs. And also if you have a huge TV, don't put just something small in front of it. It looks weird. So try to buy something matching to your TV size if you have a big TV. You don't have to have the subwoofer. Right now, I'm just uh, going to upgrade my setup or change my setup into a single soundbar with a woofer in it, uh, two woofers in it. It's thicker uh, on the uh, height side and also depth side, but it has two subwoofers and it is 120 watts. This setup is 300 watts. I'm going to be decreasing my volume, but I can't open the volume at my apartment. So you should be also thinking about your exteriors. Like if you have neighbors and they'll be pissed off. So about the sound, you don't want to open up the volume too much. You don't have to go too big. So that's one of the other reasons that you need to talk, uh, think about before your purchase. And I think one last thing is the most important thing. Uh, if you're going to spend more than 200 or 400 dollars, you could be going for stereo setup. And if you have the space and if you don't care about the cables, you can go really good at decent bookshelf speakers for 100 watt RMS for each one, like 200 watts, but pure 8 ohm 200 watts. Because the ohm levels of speakers are changing, these devices most of the time don't use the 8 ohm style uh, professional home audio uh, resistance in their speakers. So Home audio for stereo setup will be way more, way better if you want to listen uh, the acoustic uh, music and also just watch and enjoy the movies in general, just not the spatial effects too much. So if you're watching musical movies, uh, the classical movies, documentaries, and if you want to enjoy just the uh, uh, experience of the movie, not just bullets flying at your back, kind of like a 6 or 7.1, uh, very kind of surround sound, then you might be thinking about the stereo solutions too. I might be reviewing my setups because I have a lot of setups for audio solutions uh, over the years. Uh, I will be reviewing some devices because you definitely can buy a cheap digital stereo amplifier, whether it's a bulb model, which is an old style boobs just heats up. And when it's a, just a digital amplifier, if you purchase just two of the Yamo uh, or uh, Yamaha, Sony, like 100, 150 watts of stereo speakers, and if you place them right, you'll definitely get a good uh, audio out of them. For my experience, uh, four or five years ago, we made a test and people thought that I was using 5.1 setup when they watched the movie. In the end of the movie, I just told them we have two speakers in the room. So if you place your stereo carefully, you can create surround sound effect from different technologies included into the sound bars, like reflect the audio in a correct position where you exactly sit. So if you just uh, make a diagram where you sit, and if you hit the angles of the stereo just with the right angle to bounce back at you from your back, you get the front element best and the back element best because we have only two ears. We don't have 8.19 ears. So if you want to have the best audio, I will go always for the stereo setup with the amplifier. Uh, but if you want to solve the problem of audio and get the best out of it in a simplest way with a less cable uh, problems and also have the ability to connect devices with Bluetooth, optical and many connections as possible, go for the soundbar. I hope this video teach you uh, how you can purchase your soundbar. Let me know if I passed out anything like missed and you can also write at the comment section. If people ask, I might be answering with your questions, uh, with your answers and with your support. 
and hit the like button if you watched this video until now. And if you're wondering more about the home cinema, audio projection and TVs, just stay tuned. Hope to see you in the next video, Home Cinema and Tech Reviews. Bye.